So I'm going to skip uh, number five. Uh, it's pretty easy about translating distributions, and I'm just going to leave that for the worked out solutions on the PDF. Let's skip to the really interesting part. Let's actually use this in our original case of differential equations. This kind of wraps back to why we originally started thinking about deltas and distributions in the first place. We want to hit a, a mass spring system with a hammer at time A and see what happens. And we want the idealized version of the hammer. And we did that by using a non-idealized version of the hammer, by having a, a rectangle pulse and then letting the pulse width go to zero. But we're going to see that the idea of delta functions and derivatives of distributions make it rather slicker. Um, okay, so the claim is that this solves the problem of here's our, my mass spring system on the left hand side and that the forcing function is just j, that's that impulse, times delta a. And with the initial conditions y of 0 equals y prime of 0 equals 0. In the next handout, we'll discover how to actually incorporate initial conditions into the forcing function using distributions. It's kind of a cool little use of distributions. But for right now, we're just going to leave them as initial conditions. So it's, it's uh, left to its own devices. It's in equilibrium. Then bam, we hit it with this concentrated bit of impulse, transfer J momentum to it, and this is what it should look like. OK, so if we think of this as a distribution, this is not, this is definitely differentiable. Even at this point, it's not going to give us a problem, as long as we're careful. And so it's a good workout oops, with um, how distributions work. So, um, and this is just a beautiful, beautiful way to say things. Much nicer and cleaner, I think, than with the whole limits of pulses. Although the limits of pulses make it much more convincing, I think. Okay, so we're going to take, this is our y, and we're going to take that combination of y and y double prime. And of course, we're going to evaluate it in the new way by pairing it against the test function. And by definition, this is one reason why we wanted to be able to add and scalar multiply, of course. It, this, the m comes out, and then the, the, double, the double prime transfers to the, del, to the phi, rather. And with two minus signs, so it cancels. And then it's just m omega squared uh, y of phi. That's not too too different, okay? And so what is that going to be? So it's m times the integral. And again, because this has an ha, it's really going to be crucial to keep careful track of the, the limits here. Um, so we're going to do that. And so that's just going to be, just writing down the definition, phi double prime of t dt plus, I think I had a typo, in fact, in my in the PDF. I'll fix it if I remember a bit. It's good good exercise for students to find teacher typos, right? That's a good excuse for us teachers. Okay. So now we're going to put in the explicit function y here, although it actually isn't super important to do that, to be honest. But I think just to make it more concrete, I will. The main thing is just what kind of properties does y have, but we'll do that later. We'll do it a little more abstractly later. Okay. Um, okay, so this is going to be j, okay, the m cancels, and it's just going to be j over omega. And then the ha means that this integral now goes from a, a to infinity. And that's just sine of omega times t minus a, and then times phi double prime. Okay, I'm going to have to erase this because I need a, a fairly long line here. Okay, plus j omega because that had an omega squared in it. Okay, it brings it up to the top. And then again, integral from a to infinity of sine. Now, hopefully you've tried this yourself. And if you're watching, this might just might be because you got stuck somewhere, so that's okay. Um, but as soon as I get you unstuck, stop the video. Try the rest yourself. Okay, so now um, we, again, now that this has been ex made explicit and this thing is, has explicitly brought into, into effect the h sub a, which would have destroyed our ability to ordinarily differentiate this thing, it's time to bring the, the derivatives off this guy again. It's very much like a, just a little more complicated example of what I did near the end of the last video. Okay, so that's going to be j over omega. I do want to look at my little cheat sheet here on the computer to make sure I don't get the signs wrong. Okay, all right, times... All right, so this is going to be, when I do integration by parts, I'm going to take the derivative off of that guy, just one of them, though. Okay. 
Um, and that's that's all going to be from A to infinity. All the infinities always, always, always die by the compactly supportedness, the compact support. Why don't I? I guess that's what I should say. The compact support of phi prime. I guess I was saying compactly supported nature before I knew that was way too convoluted. And it happens to be, because this is a sine function, when t equals a, that's going to die as well. So that's going to die. Oh, I need another parenthesis. And then minus uh, a j. Okay, now when I take a derivative of this guy, there's going to be an omega popping out. And that's going to be cosine omega t minus a phi prime of t dt, okay? And then this, I don't really need to do anything with. Eventually what we're going to see is this is going to manipulate enough so it's going to cancel with this guy. So I'll just put, put dot, dot, dot. It's the same thing. Okay. Alrighty, so now I need to take one more derivative off this guy, okay? And so that's going to be minus j times um, cosine, oh, I guess I didn't really need that. Box. Okay. Minus j Integral, oops, just kidding. Read the wrong line. Okay. Minus j times cosine omega t minus a. Uh, I do need this though. Okay, that's now evaluated from a to infinity. So I've taken the derivative off of that guy. And again, the infinity is going to die, but now this is not going to die at zero. We'll deal with that in just a second. Okay, and then plus, the chain sign is going to change. The j is still there, but now another omega comes out. So I get j omega, integral a to infinity of, guess what? Sine omega t minus a, v of t, no derivatives, dt. Okay, and then plus, oh, and sorry, this is now minus. Oh, yeah, this is a minus. Okay. Why is this a minus? Would the different uh, integration by parts has a minus sign in it, in it, but then I'm also differentiating the cosine. So that's actually stays minus, plus dot, 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 and those all cancel. And guess what we get here? Okay, cosine of 0 is 1, and so I get minus j times phi evaluated at 0. And that's exactly, see if I can squeeze it in, j times delta prime of phi. Boom. Okay, so the summary, and again, this is how these, these things work when you're doing them sort of explicitly, we took my double prime with that particular y plus m omega squared y. We acted with that on phi, and we got the same thing as if we had taken just minus j delta and acted on phi. And by definition of what distributions are, if they do the same thing to any test functions, they're equal. Oh, and that's the delta a, sorry. I should have said delta a. Okay. So that's... Very nice. All it did, all it involved was a little bit of pushing back and forth with uh, integration by parts, which we're starting to see is so important here. And again, the intuition is simply that this is a function. This y is a function that certainly describes a spring doing nothing here. It describes a spring, an unforced spring here that happens to be in motion. And then the derivative uh, here, it's kind of like that absolute value example. That's why one reason I did the absolute value example. Continuous function with a sharp corner, one derivative gets you a jump, and another derivative gets you a delta function. And that's what's going on here. This guy, the y, doesn't really do much interesting here. It's an ordinary function. It hasn't been differentiated. It doesn't create any infinite jump here, and it's just equal to zero. It's this guy that gives all the action and creates the infinite jump there. So when you take this combination, you just get nothing interesting happening, spike, and then, okay, nothing interesting happening after here. It's just it's doing what springs do when they don't, nothing is being forced on them. And the only forcing is happening right here. Okay, look on the, the solutions PDF for a nice little summary of the, the properties that we've derived. And in the next video, or next few videos, we'll work through a handout about how to incorporate initial conditions with distributions. Um, and it's another nice motivation for delta prime, or it's, it's our first really good motivation for delta prime coming up actually. And then we'll go back to being a little more rigorous.